The 65 liter Robo Brew Bruzilla has finally made it to the US. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what its features are and some of the performance numbers on it, and that's coming up next. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see DIY how-to videos and product reviews just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. It was some time ago that Kegland announced they were coming out with a 65 liter version of the Robo Brew and everybody was pretty excited. Uh, it actually hit Australia first and then it's made its way to the US. I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of the first ones and full disclosure, as always, with all of my reviews, Kegland did send this to me by way of more beer to do a review on. So this is like my unbiased review. I, you know, I, they're not paying me to do a review or anything like that. So I, as always, I'm going to give you my thoughts. There's a couple of things that uh, I wanted to let you know about with this unit. So one of the first things you'll notice about the new 65 liter Brazilla is its size. It is pretty massive, actually. Um, it has roughly the same dimensions in height as the original Robo Brew or the version 3. As far as height and everything goes, it's about the same. A little bit taller, definitely a lot larger in diameter. Uh, has some of the same features. It has the quick disconnect for the return arm. Um, it has the return arm with the cam lock on it, just like the previous version did. Um, it's a little bit different. This time it's kind of, it looks like it's welded or soldered on. I think it might be welded on. So that's uh, about the same as the other one was. It comes with a malt pipe that's definitely larger and heavier duty than the original one was. So it's, it's pretty close to about the same height. It's definitely larger in diameter than what the original one is. Um, it does come with a false bottom and two different screens. On the Brazilla, they decided, it looks like they decided to leave out the bottom screen that they added to the version 3.0 and 3.1. So it ships with just a standard uh, screen false bottom for the malt pipe. And then the false bottom that goes down in the kettle itself is a little bit heavier duty with some uh, with a center support on it, which the other one, I don't believe it had. One of the other things they did ship with this one, and I think this might have come with the 3.0 or 3.1 version, I don't remember for sure, but it does come with a length of hose for you to be able to recirculate back down over the top of your mash. So that's kind of nice um, that they sent that. It has the dog bone that goes into, or wishbone or whatever you call it, that goes into the malt pipe. One of the changes that they made that I noticed is to the center drain. And it actually has a notch now in it, and that lines up with a groove in the return pipe. And it actually has a very solid system that connects it to that malt pipe in there. So when you get it in there and you get the clip in, basically that thing isn't going anywhere. They did pack the unit very well. It came in a piece of styrofoam and styrofoam on the top, styrofoam on the bottom, and it had kind of like a clamshell around it. It looked like they really made an attempt to try to get this right this time when they shipped it. However, my unit, and I think it's because the malt pipe was probably bouncing around in there, and it's got some pretty heavy duty um, feet, if you will, that hold it onto the spring clip in the top. It actually dented around the front of mine and there's dents all along here, and then there's two out dents, which kind of is what leads me to believe that it was the malt pipe that did the, the damage to it. Nothing that's really going to hamper the item from working or anything like that. It's just kind of one of those things, a little bit of a bummer, that it did some damage in route. Um, the other thing that the new 65 liter Brazilla has as a feature is that it is 240 volts. And because of that, they actually have three element switches. There's a 500, a 1,000 watt, and a 2,000 watt. And you can use all these in conjunction with each other, depending on what you're doing as far as, you know, what your brew day is. Probably, if you're going to be mashing, you're probably looking at somewhere between the five, either the 500 or 1,000. And then when you're ramping up temperature, you can crank all three of them on. Because of that, you do need a 240-volt connection for it. And the plug is a little bit different than what you might see normally. This is more like a air conditioner or a heater type plug. 
actually did have to get an adapter for my system. But that is pretty much all of the new features on it as far as everything goes. It comes with a glass lid, just like the previous versions did. And it has the two handles that you can lift it off with. So I mean, it's, it's obviously larger in diameter than what the other ones were. Um, one of the things that I do want to check out on this is I want to see how long it's going to take to heat up water. I want to see what the gradation marks look like because I know some people have said that they're off a little bit, at least the Australian models were. So I want to check that out. I want to see what it takes for it to heat up to, you know, mash temperature. I want to check out what the boil is like. So there's a couple different levels on that. You can do whole batches with this, no sparge on your five gallon batches. And then you can also do 10 gallon batches, obviously, but you'd have to do some sparging with that because this is only a 17.1 gallon vessel. So as far as cooling goes, it did come with another chilling coil, somewhat like the original one was. And it is a little bit larger in diameter. It fits down in the vessel, probably about, I'm gonna say maybe five or six inches away from the bottom, something like that. And there's the original one. And so you can see it's a little bit larger, a little bit heavier duty as far as uh, length goes. I'm not sure what the length is on this. It does have a new controller. The controller that they're putting on this is a controller that's shown up on the 3.1 version of the Robo Brew. It says Brazil on it as well. There were some issues with some of the uh, smaller versions. The first version 3.0, the original version, first gen, I guess, even third gen with having some issues with some of the relays and circuit paths and whatnot on the PCBs burning out and having some issues with that. Hopefully they've got all that stuff figured out. I know that they have been replacing things under warranty. And that's one of the things that I do like about Kegland is, I mean, they pay attention to issues that are going on. I wish they wouldn't happen in the first place, but when there is an issue that pops up, they definitely jump on it and try to get it figured out right away. One other thing that I wanted to let you know about is that they did add a few things to the bottom of the Bruzella, and I'm pretty sure they added it to the 3.1 as well. There are now some plastic feet around the perimeter to help hold it up off of the bottom of whatever surface you're brewing on. And they also opened up the slots on the bottom to provide a little more ventilation. Now, when I tip this one over, I saw uh, some insulation on the bottom of the kettle itself, so that should help the elements produce their heat and maintain their heat and keep the heat away from the pump and all the electronics, so that should help out with that as well. So along with the dents in the unit, the other thing that I noticed when I got it out of the box was that it was missing the nut on the back side of the ball valve. And the styrofoam where this ball valve was sitting was actually broken off of the rest of the, the part, so I don't know if maybe it was in there and fell out during shipping or something like that. Luckily, I mean, I have enough stuff around just from building different systems and stuff. I'll be able to do that, but just hopefully it's not something that anybody else encounters, but I just want to share with you, you know, what my experience is and, and you know, how this thing came. So what I'm gonna do now is I want to go ahead and uh, fill it up, see what the gradation marks look like. And then uh, after we do that, then I'll also take a look at uh, how long it takes to heat up to mash temperature. And stay tuned for an upcoming video once I get the rundown on this and try to figure out exactly, you know, I'm going to let you know how much water is underneath the malt pipe so we know how much that is. I'll be putting out a Beersmith profile for the 65 liter unit as well, um, along with some mash profiles for both 10 gallon and 5 gallon. So let me get some water and we'll test this thing out as far as volumes and uh, see how it boils. And it looks like from what I can tell, it's just barely over the three gallon mark. Not by a lot, but just a little tiny bit. Kind of what I was wondering about. It looks like we are right at the three gallon mark. If you can kind of see, it's it's touching the bottom of the, the malt pipe over here. If you can see it. So we've got about three gallons of dead space underneath of the malt pipe. Now it's not unrecoverable dead space, but it's just something to know when you go to calculate how much water volume is in there. All right, so since I'm in the United States, the first thing I'm gonna do once I get the unit powered on is I'm gonna change from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna hold down the temp button until it switches. And you'll see that the water currently is 59 degrees and we are looking at a set point of 168. Now I'm gonna, I'm basing this off, this heat up test off of a wheat beer that I did recently and that was 8.25 gallons for a no sparge 
on uh, that particular system that I did. So I'm going to use that kind of as a test base here. So we'll go ahead and lower the temperature down. Let's see here, hit the temp once. And we'll lower it down to 158. Hit the temp again. Then hit play. And then you'll notice that the little robot starts doing its thing, but we don't have any of these elements on. So we'll go ahead and hit the 500, the 1000, and the 2000. And we'll set a timer and we'll come back and see how long it takes for it to heat up to 158. I do have the malt pipe in as well as the false bottom. So it will simulate exactly what you're going to experience on a brew day, at least for me anyway. So see you in a few. All right. So we just hit 158 about at about 40 minutes, 50 seconds, something like that. Had to turn the camera gear and everything back on. So the elements have switched off and uh, we're holding at 158 right now. So that's 8.25 gallons uh, from 59 degrees up to 158 in 41 minutes. So now what I want to do is I want to take some of the liquid out down to about six and a half gallons and see what kind of a boil we get at like six and a half gallons. And uh, then that'll tell us what a full five gallon batch at boil is going to look like in this unit. And then uh, we'll take it up to a 10 gallon batch size and see what that boil looks like. So be back shortly. All right, so I drained it back down to six and a half gallons. And one thing I wanted to show you was that there's not a ton of space for the actual boil on like a six and a half gallon boil for a five gallon batch. So just something to be aware of. There's not a lot of space between it and the false bottom, but we're gonna bring it up to a boil and see how it does with all 3,500 watts on. And uh, we'll go from there and we'll come back when we got it boiling so we can show you what that looks like. Sorry for the loudness of the uh furnace there but this is it's kind of coming to a boil now after about 22 23 minutes um, that's one of the things that several people had talked about was that it kind of builds up under the screen and then comes rushing out from underneath of there so you know that's one of those things to expect on this with the boil it's not a consistent rolling boil like a unexposed element or exposed element um, so it's just kind of bubbling out from underneath of there which it's still boiling but it has a little bit of a different boil because of that screen underneath the bottom so all right so here we are on 12 gallons of water and it seems to be boiling actually pretty good it's kind of interesting because with the higher volume of water it seems like it's boiling more consistently the bubbles or whatever are coming out from underneath that screen a little more consistently than it was even with like a six and a half gallon batch so i don't know what that's about but it definitely has a good rolling boil on 12 gallons so i'm i'm pretty impressed with that i was wondering whether or not the 3500 watts would boil that well or not but it looks pretty good one last thing i wanted to try before i give you my final thoughts is i wanted to pull out the screen out of the bottom and see what kind of a boil we get by not having the false bottom in there i'm just kind of curious to see what that looks like so let me pull that out real quick and i'll be right back so here we are without the screen in the bottom and i tell you it's got a nice rolling boil that way as well it took a little while to get back up once i took the screen out but i tell you it's uh it looks like a nice rolling boil something that i would expect from uh, an electric system Again, I'm pretty impressed by the 3,500 watts, how it's doing, so looks very good. All right. So my final thoughts on the initial look are that I think it's definitely a capable 10-gallon system. I think it's a capable 5-gallon system. I am going to be doing a brew day on it here very shortly, and I'm going to be doing a 10-gallon batch. I really don't see a whole lot of reason to just, you know, get this big system and only brew a 5-gallon batch on it. So we are going to brew a 10-gallon batch on this. And one inter interesting thing about this system is that the malt pipe is said to hold like 16 kilograms or like 35 or 36 pounds of grain. So I'm not gonna max it out on the first brew that I do. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of uh, more information on it and learn how the system works. But then I think I'm gonna just go for broke and fill the malt pipe up and see how big of a beer we can do with it. And remember, if you wanna learn more about electric brewing, see DIY how-to videos and product reviews just like this one. Consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell if you do. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We will see you on the next video coming very soon.